Hello, Professor Bright here, and welcome back to the Sunless Skies, where I have decisions to make. Some perhaps poor decisions. Perhaps very poor decisions indeed. You see, well, let me look at my hold situation and I shall explain. We have our bronze wood, and we know we can get coarser nectar just by going back up to New Winchester, but on the other hand, there's a horror to find down somewhere in this region. There's possibly Lustrum and other places to find. And we do have two whole fuel, three kind of, you know, two in the whole 92% of the current barrel, and two supplies. So, I mean, let's go and make some potentially terrible decisions. And by potentially terrible, I mean, let's look for a horror. Because I don't know what it is, and I want to know. And then we'll probably just hook up through Palmer and Plenty's because we have that one job to hand in. And, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. Just to double check, I did put my mining drill back on. Yes, I sure did. Good job, me. Making those good choices. Not like those bad choices that other captain made. You know, me yesterday. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it indeed. Also, a uh, fun note. Uh, sometime during this month, which will probably be April and not actually March, because March has a few days left in it, as far as I can tell from the current calendar. Um, oh my. This isn't where I want to be at all. This is a lie. Why have you led me down this path? But no, there's going to be an update called the Wayfarer update, which will increase the number of things to do in Albion. Which is kind of making me content to just stay in the reach for a bit longer, you know? At least for now. The way I figure, oh, hey, I need to kill one of you. Could you do me a favor and just die real quick? Oh, fuck me. Well, making those bad choices. Hey, thanks for taking a hit for me, bud. Real kind of you. Oh, nope, didn't want to make, didn't want to make that maneuver at all. Nope. You have fun over there. All right. Yeah, that sucks. Nope. Shoot. Was hoping that would kill you, actually, but uh, didn't. So, uh, if you could do me a favor and just die already, that would be swell, pal. There we go. God, he took a lot to kill. All right. Reclaim that corpse. Your crew isn't pleased by the prospect, but it's what the carpenter needs to fix the magician's equipment. Oh, that's actually a good reminder. I thought I'd fixed that already, but I didn't. Aha. Uh -huh. You hold the splintered corpse above. To put your crew at ease, you bind it with chains and bells. If it moves, you'll know, and it won't be able to get far. Deliver it, deliver it to the carpenter in Port Avon at your leisure. Yes, well, I mean, that's a rather pressing issue now, isn't it? Um, hmm. That does change my route, potentially. And I did want to visit this horror, but I mean... There's something glistering out there, and who knows, that might be something valuable. Also, this lets me avoid combat with that guy, so I'm kind of okay with it. Ah, we're only, we're at 20 hull, we're fine. What threats could be out there? More scribe spinsters? Nah, it's fine, it's fine. Ah, oh, dear. Oh, and I didn't miss the chance to read more about them, but nah, I figure we'll kill a scribe spinster soon enough was distracted by talk of the Wayfarer update and more fun things coming. Wasn't prepared to be murdering a scribe spinster, not in the right headset, if you get my meaning. Mindset, rather. Ooh. So, I mean, I guess this has turned into completely not what I had planned, which is going to be a northerly expedition. Huh. How am I supposed to get there, then? Curious. But, I mean, we're here now. Hello, you. This might not be a good choice, but it's the choice I'm making. Hmm, that lag of loading. It is a thing of beauty. For it implies there might be useful things out there piece of shit. Come on. Ah. Boulder dash. Taking damage I don't need to be taking. 
Yes, wonderful. You approach the buckled wreckage, poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory indeed. Um, this won't help much. But, yeah, let's see how this works out. Let the marauder find a better use in death than it had in life. Oh my. Your crew go to work eagerly, vaulting out into the bright tools at the ready. The stripping of the marauder is slow and painful work. They are cobbled together of stolen parts. Finding suitable fits for your own engine is a process of trial and error. Many of your crew will have lost friends, family, lover to the marauder, lovers to the marauders. It speeds the work. Excellent. I will take that 14 haul. I made a profit, sort of, after a fashion. But, uh, yes, send out the bat one more time. Oh. Ah. An abandoned signal box. Hmm. Window cracks have accreted a filing of... accreted a filling of moss green dust. Once white paint is yellowed and peeling, the signal box possesses a faded dignity, like a beleaguered butler. It was designed with pride to be part of that great folly, the Isambard Line. Inside, beneath a desk covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains in dire need can borrow from the cash inside, but custom dictates they must later replenish it. I mean... I don't need these things. It would be nice to have, but... This place was a folly. Already nature strives to reclaim it. It's not a place to linger. The stokers work vigorously. This place makes them yearn for the riotous camaraderie of New Winchester. And the good news is they will eventually make it back there. Maybe sometime today even. Maybe. It's possible. Although what we're really looking for is Lustrum, and I'm surprised we haven't found any sign of it. This is the right weather, it's the right place for it. But no. No mountain full of hours, nothing. Nothing at all. <gasps> oh, a tackity. Oh, good. And I see some wreckage. Let me just go ahead and check out this. The shields, you say? I'll take that uh, repair, thank you very much. And now I'm back up to full. And basically invincible, right? That's how this works. One last expedition for the owl. And then to elsewhere. <gasps> Has it now? How do I get there? Well, we'll find out. All will be learned in time. All secrets, all things will be known. And I'm just going to turn this light out. Thank you. Shit. Well, I do have a pressing need to murder things. Or maybe I don't. <gasps> Wearing sigils emblazoned on the stones, their fiery angles melting the snow. Don't read them, Captain, your crew warn. Correspondence? Here? Oh, God, there's two of you. Uh, well. Hmm. I see. This is not great. This could be going better. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of, like, horror elements here. Oh. Oh, hello. Dear friends. Why are there so many of you here? Oh, my God. Make this stop. Make this stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. But I want to see the thing though. Wait. Is it vulnerable? No, it isn't. Not vulnerable enough. Not vulnerable enough for me. What horror is this? It doesn't even have a name yet, as far as I can tell. I mean, it's turned up my terror to way too high, but I don't know what it's called. It presumably has a name, but I can't tell you what it is, so... Ah. Directions get messy around here. I'm gonna let you... You know what? You're nearly dead. Let's kill you. Let's fix that problem for you. Make you fully dead.
There we are. Is this not better? The splintered remains of the spinster turn slowly. The skies are full of fluttering paper. It's as if someone brought confetti to a funeral. Hmm, the scribe spinsters were wrought from bronzewood, now popular with London train rights and cabinet makers. And a 75% chance of success. Versus, of course, recovering Xi's apartment. The spinsters sew them into their coats and wigs. Yellowed with age, blushed with mildew, spidered with writing. Who knows what secrets they may hold, and I am all about secrets, so... Hmm. Your crew learn from the outer hatches, lean from the outer hatches with boat hooks and nets, swiping at the floating pages like a class of frenzied lepidopterists. Soon you have accumulated a small pile of parchment, dense with pictographic script. You carry it to your cabin. What secrets might it hold? What secrets indeed? What secrets indeed? Oh. A touch of the skies. Skyfarers exposed to the haunting light of the stars are prone to sudden obsessions and erratic behavior. An irregularity in the galley. The table is neatly laid, but the plates are glued in place and the cutlery nailed down. The culprit is quickly discovered when she tries to nail the chief engineer's head to the chief engineer's head. Everything has its place, she explains, when she's dragged before you. Confine them to quarters where they can do no harm. They're no good to you in this state. You can find them to quarters and resolve to discharge them at the next port. The atmosphere aboard is subdued for a time, but it is understood that these things happen in the sky. The heaven's price, they call it. I see. I need to be out of here. I need to be not in the middle of this horror, but I want to know what it's named. And so I have a problem. Some might say a severe problem, and the problem is letting my terror get this high. But, but, counterpoint, I have nothing. I have nothing but excuses. The Desolation of Saliba. I don't think that's what this whole thing is called, but curious nonetheless. And is this just like, hmm, hmm, I can't wait till I can get a saying. I'm pretty sure that's an Albion is where they have tools for a saying, and I want them. I want them now. I want them yesterday. But that is not today's mission. No, no, no. Today is to find this port. Eventually. Also to get food in us. That would be lovely. I would like food, please. How much money do I have? I have plenty of money. It'll be a simple matter to gather ourselves some food, especially after we've gotten these hours and, oh, who knows what else we have in this hold at this point. Uh, no, no, no. The crew are starving, hollow faces and wide wolfish eyes. How the cold bites at your narrowed bodies. It's hard as diamond and sharp as a tooth. How can you stop this damned shivering? Can toil warm you? Can companionship? Every moving thing- oh my god. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. The exertion drives back the cold, but the company is muted. Are the crew comforted by your presence or stifled by it? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. If we get to this port, they'll be fine. As long as we can buy supplies. If not, I mean, they'll be fine. Probably. Maybe. There's a chance that they will all die. But, I am willing to take that chance. For the greater good. Uh, yeah, punch the ones who look better fed. Again, everybody needs to be on the same side here, you know? We're all on the same side. Meanwhile, I'm beating people who are just bullying other people for food, but, you know. It's fine. They could never master my... They're incompetent. They could never master my techniques. Who are you referring to, buddy? And what techniques are those? Just curious, you understand. Carillon. Shaking hands, stomach pangs, delirium. It was only a matter of time before the accidents began. A corpse has been found in the engine room. A ruptured pipe released a fatal jet of steam. The body's flesh is seared. A sound from the gathered crew. Someone just licked their lips. I mean, I am a practical man. Dispose of the body more pragmatically. A nod to your cook. There'll be stew tonight, although... We are right near port, so I think it's more responsible 
to give the body to the skies don't want someone seeing something to, well, that they don't need to. Wash the body and wrap it in muslin, gather the crew, mutter a handful of uncertainties, was the deceased really an example of diligence or forthright or well-mannered? Afterwards, open an external door and give them to the winds and the cold and the lazy lingering mists. And dock. So, Carillon, hello, hello, you are not who I expected to find here. At this peaceful Carmine institution, was founded by devils from London and dedicated to the betterment of the soul. Botheridge's A Tour of Heaven describes it as a cross between a spa, a sanatorium, and a purgatory. Uh, she commends its bracing airs. Before we do anything further, though, I have desperate need of supplies. Mm, four should do. I can't see us needing more than that. And uh, before we do that, though, uh, what's your bizarre offering? Ah, thank you. Fresh from the gardens of the Reach, this green-thumbed captain buys crops for a pittance from the region's scattered farmstead, then sells the yield at larger ports. Wonderful. So those were fairly cheap. We'll make a nice little bit of a profit, or perhaps I'll just store them away, one or the other. Carillon Center? Yes, uh, travel around, Carillon. Carillon is broken into terraces where most of the soul treatments take place. Some are easier to access than others. Hmm. Try to explore, Carillon. Others seem to be coming and going as they please. A gentle denial. Before you can take the first step towards one of the terraces, the devil blocks your way. Not yet, I'm afraid. You must have permission from the presiding deviless. Some of our procedures are exceedingly delicate. We need to be certain you comprehend what you're seeing. He turns you in the direction of the center of Carillon. I'm sure she'll make time to see you. Very well, very well. Uh, write our port report first, but before we do that, grey stone, the color of a monastery, attending devils and devilesses dressed in uniform, and an incoming parade of the sick, the friendless, the dying, and those who think their lives would be better if only they were somewhere else, or something else. This is Carillon, where souls are refined into something more impressive. Curious. Write a port report. The penitents come from all corners of the high wilderness. Someone will want to hear of their comings and goings. You take some notes on a pilgrim's journey through Carillon. The first port of call is the beehive-shaped office in the center, or, more accurately, the long queue leading into it. From there, the infernal attendants direct them to one of Carillon's seven gardens to undergo penances. They certainly look penitent by the time they emerge. Presumably, their souls are much improved, not that you can tell. Curious. Curious, curious, curious. And this is inaccurate now. Since, uh, no. Prudent Secretary is no longer a company house. But, regardless. Uh, go and speak to the presiding deviless. She's an artisan of souls. Perhaps she can do something with yours. Perhaps she'll just offer you advice. Led between the wickerworks. The presiding deviless works in an office shaped like a beehive. A stone and wickerwork building that stands all alone in the middle of Carillon's central courtyard. She conducts intake interviews with new patients, one by one. After a long time in line, you reach her at last. Greetings, Professor. How may we stretch, strain, purify, and strengthen you, now you've come to Carillon? Her apron is starched, her dress pinstriped. There's a stack of patient files on her desk, color-coded. The corners of her mouth say she... Mm. The corners of her mouth say she knows something to your disadvantage. Curious. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. We could potentially provide exquisite insight, but that's neither here nor there. Ask her about Carillon. She must be used to explaining to newcomers and to those whose memories are attenuated by pain. Seven gardens for seven sins. We do whatever is necessary to reclaim unsatisfactory souls, she says. She sits back in her chair, and you can imagine her making just such a pitch to the princes of hell. For humans, primarily, though we do attend to a few other creatures elsewhere on the Great Chain, they come to us with souls that are stained, disused, in every kind of sordid condition, and we make them acceptable again. Most of those who come to us are volunteers. The rest are beyond the position of being able to volunteer, consigned to Carillon by their families or employers. Oh... 
And after a stay at Carillon, what then? One should not enter if one does not know how to leave. She looks surprised. Most people go home again, she says. Some find that they are wary of their souls and pass them on to us. We operate on that slender profit, and on what we get from donations or from sales of penance and forgiveness. She looks at the, blank, the blank page before her. But what about you? You look sturdy enough to make full use of our services. Are you afraid of needles? What's your view of worms? Which do you fear more, venoms or poisons? She takes down a page or two on all your least favorite things. Hmm. Well, well, well. Listen to a proposal and gain access to the terraces of Carillon. She's prepared to offer you a deal. What kind of deal? A welcome patient. Listen, she says, you are free to make use of Carillon. Take a penance or two, alter your soul. I think you'll find our services very imaginative. Curious descriptor there. There's another matter I hope you will look into. A devil in rose-colored gloves. He used to supervise the gaslight terrace. He was removed from that position, but I fear he may still not be entirely aligned with the objectives of Carillon. If you find out anything about him, anything to his disadvantage. She looks grim. Bring me the evidence, and I will reward you. Well, well, well. Hmm. Return to the center of Carillon. Oh, I'll come back in time. Not today, but... In time. Travel around, Carillon. And I wonder. Visit the Gaslight Terrace. Dozens of newcomers walk in that direction. It must be a safe choice. Of course, of course. In a flow of ordinary folk, your companions are a lady in a buttoned cloak and a young male student. They, walk, they talk among themselves about the seasonable warmth and about how the yellowish glow of the lamps does not show blue silk to best effect. Their words are commonplace, their hands folded and gloved, their opinions supplied by a respectable gazette. You have almost forgotten them even while you are still walking together. The path descends by shallow steps to a broad terrace, as crowded as an imperial exhibition. Gaslight lampposts are scattered irregularly across a flagstone terrace. Between them are stations, each containing a patient receiving a treatment. The supervising devils tend these stations, stopping first here, and then there, like bees at flowers. Hmm. Vision, imagination, the ability to see beyond the nearest convention. That's what the devils are trying to evoke here. Well, I mean... Sure. Penance paid. A professional chaperone would have been a great novelist if it weren't for a disinclination to pick up a pen. As punishment, she has been required to sing continuously, without respite, for over three hours. Do you feel any more interesting now? asks the supervising devil. As for your punishment, it does not bear speaking of. For a month afterward, you see devils dancing in the corners of your eyes. Curious, that. And I can gain multiple of this? Oh, well, we get to see what failure consists of. Unendurable. A foppish gentleman prefers pencils to pens due to the reduced risk of error. Until the penitent recovers from this inclination, he's been dressed in signature paisley of the worshipful company of vermin exterminators. As for your punishment, it does not bear speaking of. You don't have the stamina to wait it out. But can I gain multiple, though? But can I, though? Yes, I have two penances, Enlightenment. Interesting. Oh, and these change. A man in naval uniform produced a pamphlet on health-giving exercise and circulated it to the servants. Until the penitent recovers from this inclination, he is drinking the sort of poison that makes your lips go numb if properly dosed, and kills you in minutes if not. The supervising devil watches and takes notes. Huh. Curious. But I'm not lightless. Good to know. Approach the spineless curate. He sits in stocks attended on by a devilish orderly. And who indeed, who indeed. At the nearest station, a curate has been shackled into an ordinary pillory. His eyes beseech you to visit him. Sure. Let's meet him. You step closer. I've seen something. In this light, it's hard not to see things. A devilish orderly jabs the curate with a needle. At the sight of the jab, the curate's skin goes lavender. I'm being treated for not believing in God. I've tried everything. Prayer, fasting... 
Long weekends with a professional saint. Some of it worked. My sermons were suffering. My bishop complained. And has it helped? I have dreams of snakes and angels, he says. It hasn't made me a mystic. I don't think the devils are real either. Just men with funny eyes, aren't they? The devilish orderly smiles with extra teeth. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. What is the curate's price? A penance shift of perspective. I mean... Ooh. Yeah, see, I'm not willing to do that, though. That seems like a lot of work for not a lot of gain, if you get my meaning. Um. Oh. You need a clear soul to be admitted. Interesting. How deep do we want to dive? A little bit deep. You know what? We're going to go here. Visit the checkerboard garden. It is reached by a flight of wrong sized steps. The rise is too steep and the flat's too narrow. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so if we get shifts of perspective, then we can free the curate and see what that does. It's not a long journey, but by the time you come out of, onto the plane of the checkerboard, your calves are hurting. I'll bet. The devils are playing tricolored chess with some of the penitents. White pieces, red pieces, pieces of the color of a flourishing wind. Around the edges of the board sit the patients who have already been captured, or who were never part of the game to begin with. Ah, I see. Consider the rubbery man. I would like to consider them, of course. He stands at the edge of the board, ignored by the players. What you doing, friend? No one has dressed him for the chess game or let him enter the board. He stands off to one side, tentacles squirming. He's surprised that you approach him. He moves to make room for you in case you are merely trying to occupy his space. When you speak to him, he offers you a squishy handshake. By various signals, gestures, and directions of his eyes, he indicates that he has come here looking for his place in the world. Um, uh, hmm. Curious. Ask the rubbery man about the devil with the rose-colored gloves. And then hope you can understand the answer. Startling. The rubbery man holds up one tentacle representing the devil with the rose-colored gloves. Then he holds up another tentacle. After a moment, he twists the two together. Are the tentacles meant to be kissing? Is that what that is? When you look blank, the rubbery man repeats the pantomime several times. Perhaps the devil has a lover. Perhaps the devil lo <laughs> loves the rubbery man. Perhaps the devil enjoys exotic forms of dance. Who could say? Who could say? Leave him alone, though. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, considering him one more time? Redemption of a rubbery man. Or elevation. Hmm. Oh. Leave him alone for just right now, but uh, gain a penance of shift of perspective. Those who name drop, who aim too high, who spend too much time in low company, who do not know their place, they wind up here. Not liking the way you phrase that, friend. A woman wearing a horse head tried to hitch a ride in a royal carriage. Until she overcomes these flaws, she is doing vigorous exercises in a sweaty room. And our punishment is the same as always. Unbearable to speak of. Eh. I am getting more terror. This is a bit worrisome. The white bishop ran for mayor of a city without being a resident. To cure these defects of character, he has been stripped of garments and possessions and given an entirely new name. I only do one success. A woman, still dressed in queenly robes, invited a princess to a drinking party. As a corrective, she is doing vigorous exercises in a sweaty room. Damn it. Damn it all to hell! The Red King endlessly told the anecdote about once having met the captivating princess. For the penitent's own good, he is being subjected to daily readings on the importance of knowing one's place. The Red King, you say? That sounds important. Also, I have the captivating princess, I believe. Hmm. A lady used a familiar form of address with a master. To cure these defects of character, she's been stripped of garments. Hmm. One more try before we give up on this, because my terror situation, it's getting a bit high. But one more time! 
Yeah, yeah, it's getting a bit too high for my tastes. Uh, continue. And I didn't read those last two, but... Hmm. The flourishing bishop wore ermine without being entitled to do so. A flourishing bishop. Also, I'm kind of... Eh. Oh, the white rook, the... Oh, I see. I see. They mean the chess pieces. The red king is the king in... Okay, I get it. I understand this now. But yes, the white rook used French expressions liberally in conversation. They really like just stripping people of their garments. That does seem to be their big thing in Carillon. Unfortunately, I kind of don't feel comfortable at this level of, uh, of terror, rather. So, uh, while the white queen is captured just as you go, there's no time to look back and the match in progress. We gotta kind of get out of here, unfortunately. So, perhaps not. Uh, perhaps another time we will return to this place. That time is not today. No, tomorrow, today, next episode, however you want to phrase it, we need to get back to New Winchester and then probably go to Palmer and Plenty's. And then go to Port Prosper. Yes, maybe, perhaps, perhaps. We shall see. We shall see. Well, perhaps we stop at Port Avon first. Well, the plan will be discussed next episode. Goodbye. <laughs> But no, uh, for now, thank you for your time. Know the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.